Hello everyone, John here with the Bronco. Um, we're gonna put a Bronc Buster bushing in today. Um, I'll get to the, my goal is to put the little splints on the um, tie rods today, steering rods, but uh, we'll see. But we're gonna, so the first step is we're gonna take off this wheel. Um, we're gonna use 19 millimeters. We have a power tool there. And then we're gonna remove this. In this case, it's a 21 millimeter. And we'll go from there. Um, if you're jacking, you can jack under here. Um, I'm lifting the car today just because it's I can that, that, I have the ability to do that. But um, I'm wrong, Buster. They said to put a jack under these bolts and capture capture this area, and, and that works well to, as a jacking point. So that was a good. I thought that was a good tip. Um, so things you're going to need, you know, impact is useful but not necessary. Um, Lug nuts are 19 millimeters, um, 21 for that one bolt. I guess sometimes though that's a 19 or an 18 or something, so it just depends and it doesn't seem to always be consistent. Some kind of a hammer to knock loose that where that steering rod tapered fit is, so I got a few dead blow hammers. Maybe a copper punch if I need something a little more abrupt. Um, Notice in the Bronc Buster video they used a copper hammer, but I don't have one, I just have the steel one. I'm just, I don't want to mar up. My surfaces bronc buster bushing of course got your clamp that they supply and a thing to press in the bushing as well as that um, a little grease you want some grease any any quality grease will i'm sure be fine and yeah that's 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 what we need a big screwdriver i guess to knock off the the little clip the existing one of these on the inside of the rubber um boot so you need a screwdriver and those are some of the main tools we'll need but we'll just kind of get started here and get this done first let's remove the wheel first step is to take a 19 millimeter um, you can use a big breaker bar and impact helps though let's take your 19 millimeter and let's take the wheel off now and we'll just repeat this with all the lug nuts Yeah, let's repeat that with all the lug nuts and then um, we'll move to the next step. Okay, next we got all those lug nuts off. Let's just remove the wheel. Careful, these things are heavy. At least, yeah, I mean, not terrible, but man, that's a big tire. Wheel, they look big. This is just a stock Sasquatch package. They look big on the vehicle. I mean, they don't look big on the vehicle, but look at this thing. This tire is huge. That's awesome. Anyway, <laughs> just a footnote. Okay, so let's set this aside. Okay, here we are. Next, we're going to take off this. Loosen this up by a few taps with a hammer. We're going to take this clamp off, pull this, loosen that up, pull this in, and then you can see this clamp right back in there. Um, let me get a little light on there. Okay, you can see that little dog ear on that clip. We're going to hit that with a screwdriver to knock that loose. And let's go ahead and do those steps now. Okay, so now we're gonna take off this clamp right here. Get yourself a big pliers. And I should say, I've never done this before on a Bronco or on anything. So if I can do it, you can do it. So I'm just loosening this clip up here. Um, next, let's take this off. So this is a 21 in this instance, but I guess these can be different sizes. So let's take this off next. Make sure it's going to the left. Take this off. That was easy. Uh, next, we're going to tap this with a, uh, a hammer. I'm not sure what this is going to take to loosen this up. Okay, so let's try a copper punch. <laughs> it does look like everybody struggles with this a little bit. Um, let's try something else here. Okay, so I ended up using a big steel hammer and I gave it a few taps here and then I just kept going up. This is a tapered fit and there it goes. So keep tapping it here, tapping it here. My plastic dead blow hammers that I was using uh, weren't enough. I mean, you need you need metal on metal. 
I used my copper punch a little, but uh, ended up just a few taps here, and then boom, 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 and it came up. So I think that's the ticket for that. And this is a tapered fit, so it wasn't hard, but um, it just took a little bit. Okay, next we're gonna get that, that clamp off. So I'm gonna take a screwdriver and one of my hammers. And again, I haven't done this before, so hopefully I don't. I'm just gonna get that on there. Okay, we got that loosened off. That actually went, that's the first time I've ever done that. That, that clamp came right off. Huh, that was the part I was actually kind of worried about. Huh, that was easy. I took a screwdriver and I put it right on this dog ear and just gave it a few right off. Very nice, okay, let's move on to the next step. Okay, so now we're gonna knock this all the way out. Okay, good. And now it's just a matter of taking off this boot. So we're gonna kind of slide this boot off here. And I guess this thing kind of spins out. But I need to take, get up into here. Okay, so now we're gonna take this boot off. And once we get this boot pulled out just by twisting it and pulling, then we're gonna turn the steering all the way to the driver's side to access the nut that we're gonna take off so that we can get this Oh, so just twist and pull, and it'll it'll pop off. And again, I've never done this before, so if I can do it, you guys can do it. Okay. I got that loosened up. I'm going to go ahead and turn all the way driver now. Okay, I finally got this. You you slide this all the way down to where it's the, on top of the threads here, or head it that way, and then underneath you get under here, and you grab on this boot here, where it's up here and you just pull it off and now it reveals this where you're going to use the crescent wrench and um and break that loose pretty big crescent wrench so let's go ahead and do that now and i did turn this all the way to driver's side so that i could access this this thing here that we're gonna that we're gonna take off so i had this big crescent wrench but it was a little hard to fit up in here so i finally found kind of just this medium one I know you recommend using a Harbor Freight one, but I wanted a little more leverage just because I wasn't sure how tight that was going to be. So here I am. I'm on that. And let's see. I've never had this off before. Let's see how tight it is. Okay. Reasonably snug. Um, let's take, try a little impact on the end of this with a, with a hammer. Sometimes things aren't really overly tight. They just need a little, a little encouragement. Try a different angle like that. And I'm gonna give it a little. Okay, so I was trying to push. I'm gonna get on my back so I can pull. There it goes. Oh, that's the way to do that. Get on your back, get on here with the crescent wrench, and then pull. That was easy. Didn't even need a hammer. So there we go. I'm just gonna pull down, which would be turning it to the left. So that's the ticket. Okay, now we're just gonna turn this all the way off and um, then we'll just screw this tie rod off. So yeah, now we're just gonna screw this off to the left all the way off and then we'll go from there. So we're turning this off. Um, I'm switching to a smaller crescent wrench and I don't need a lot of leverage since it's broke loose. This is just a Pittsburgh crescent wrench. The Bronkbuster guy recommended that, I picked one up. It's great. Um, this is a 34 millimeter end wrench if you needed it. If you need, if you have one, I didn't have one, but crescent wrench actually worked, worked fine on this. I love this Pittsburgh one. I, I think I probably could have broke it loose with this one, but I did use an old, just an old longer one that I had around and pulling down on my back was absolutely the easiest way. I was trying to do it from the top side and couldn't get leverage. So, um, get on your back and just pull on it. So go ahead and loosen this up and then we just turn this. You can see. I couldn't quite tell in the video what they were doing, but as you, as you twist this, now that it's loose, see how this is just gonna, it's just gonna come off. Nothing, nothing to it. And then we'll turn the steering wheel back to the passenger side. So this goes in and then we're gonna take out that little black spacer. This is actually going better than I thought it would. And again, I've never done this before. 
Okay, next we're just going to take out this black spacer and um, this should uh, shouldn't be too bad. There's three little indents that you can hit or you can just break it apart with a screwdriver and pull out with a pick. I'm not sure what method I'm gonna use, but here we go. And I did turn this all the way, um, the steering rack all the way passenger to the right to retract that. So I'm just gonna break this apart. I've been fiddling around with it enough. I'm just gonna get this, get this thing out of here. I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. It's almost out already. So I took a screwdriver and kind of tapped in each one of these three little spots. And after using a screw, screwdriver to hit these three spots, then I just kind of took this pick in here, this one, kind of hooked behind it. And it seems to be pulling out. I've almost got it pulled out. So it's coming out better than I thought it would. I was kind of worried about this. And again, I've never done this before. And I thought I was gonna have to destroy this piece to get it out, but it's really, as you can see, I've almost got one edge out. It's not, it's not bad. And we'll just keep working on that and get it the rest of the way out. Okay, so here it is. This piece just actually kind of was finagling around with it. Once I got one, one end up, I just used a kind of a regular screwdriver and got underneath it and it just popped out. And so between the screwdriver and this, it... It goes out. Now it's time to put in uh, our bronc bushing. Good, I'm excited about this. Okay, so here's our part. Um, we're gonna put a little bit of grease around the edge here. You can see there's a little bit of a camphor here or a little bit of a swollen part, almost a cam, if you will. And that's gonna line up with this cam in here. And it's gonna go in with the numbers here out. Okay, so it's gonna go in like that. So this camphor cam area here is gonna line up with that cammed area. And um, I'm gonna put some grease around, around this O-ring. If you have a brush, just a little bit. If some is good, more is better. No, that's not necessarily true. And we're just gonna do that. I don't know if it needs it on the inside or not, but I'm here, so I'm gonna do that. And good. Okay, so now we're lining up our lobe with this lobe in here and we're just gonna locate that in there just want to make sure I got that in the right spot then we take our alignment tool okay and it's made to fit over that so we're just gonna go in here and we're just gonna lightly tap that till it bottoms out just want to make sure that looks okay okay it's Seems to be going in. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, we almost got it. Yep. Okay, so as you hammer it in, a little bit of the O-ring will come off and the guy who made it said that's normal just so it has a tight fit. Um, I found it easiest, like, Tap the end of my finger one time, not not bad, but a little bit. So I just got a something on here like this, and then I just hammered on the end of this hammer. And there's a point where it just kind of bottoms out and stops, so I stop. But that was easier than me trying to hold this and tap it, and I, yeah, you know, didn't catch it bad, but just just enough to where I wouldn't want to do that all day. But anyway, got it on there, easy, taps in easy. Now there's a little lip here where this little. Um, Snap ring's gonna go in, and you can use your tool to kind of snap that in. So um, let's go ahead and put that into place next. And now we're gonna take this snap ring, and we're just gonna put that up here, and you can I can see there's a groove where it goes in. So we're just gonna very lightly, I don't think it's gonna take a lot to get that in there. Just gonna lightly tap that in. Let's see, let's see how that looks looks to be in place there um, it doesn't take much okay good okay just a footnote I, I if you put your snap ring in and it's loose you can't get it to snug in like what was happening with me 
it's because you don't have your bushing knocked in far enough. Um, it goes in further than, than you would think. So I took the snap ring out and I thought, I'm just gonna make sure. So I tapped on this some more and the Bronquester guy's right. It does bottom out. You'll feel a solid feel when it bottoms out. So I, I hammered in, took the snap ring out. I hammered that in some more. Um, and then I waited till I heard the tone change as I was hammering on this with this, I used a big plastic deadbolt blow hammer. And then it kind of changes tone. And then I put my snap ring back in and you can feel that it, it tapers in. And then I put my snap ring in and just gently pushed it in and it snapped into place and now it isn't falling out. At first I thought I had broken my snap ring or something was going on, but now it's in there nice and tight and, and I feel good about that. So anyway, if that happens where your snap ring isn't going in tight, pull your snap ring out and you put that bushing in a little further. So just a, a tip from a rookie. And it's really going well. This is a really nice product. Okay, next we just need to turn this, kind of reversing what we did to take it apart. We're going to turn the steering rack all the way um, driver towards your left or driver side to bring that out. And we're just going to reassemble things. We're going to put our um, tie rod back on, um, to go, you know, that screws into there. We'll use a little bit of grease on that steering rack and on this end. There's grease in there to begin with. And snug that up and... Get this in here, don't want to cross thread it, thread it, so let's go ahead and do that now. So turn your steering rack all the way driver. So there's grease on the steering rack from the factory, so I'm just gonna go ahead and grease this up now. Put a little grease on here. Doesn't hurt anything. It's supposed to have that, like I said, from the factory, so there's your teeth are back, back in here, so put some on those steering teeth. So get some grease on there. And then we'll go ahead and put our tie rod in. Okay, so now we're gonna screw this back into here and snug that up. Just don't cross thread that. If it doesn't go in easy by hand, stop and, oh, that goes on there like butter. And again, it should spin on by hand just like this. And then once I get that on, I'll snug that up. I put a little more grease back in that joint there because it has some from the factory. Okay, so there's a point where this starts to spin. I'm just going to put a little grease on that while I'm here before I get that boot back on there. So let's go ahead and do this. I kind of like this project. This is going pretty good. And then let's just see how that's going there. Get some more up in there, good. And I, I, don't, I found that it doesn't matter whether it's motorcycles or whatever, it seems like there's never really a lot of grease on stuff I've found. I know they're trying to just get it done with the bare minimum. Okay, so that's, that's good, that's in there. Now we're just gonna snug this up um, fairly tight. I mean, you want it to be at least as tight as when you got it off, so get my trusty wrench on there and we're just gonna Snug that up. I think I might even go from the bottom and pull the opposite direction. You don't want that coming off, and that's that's reasonably big. So I'm just gonna get down here from the bottom side and put this backwards so it doesn't hit this cross member here. And you gotta kind of keep that boot pulled back as you're doing this. It's not hard, but Now I'm just gonna snug that up good and tight. There we go. All right. Okay, I went ahead and just got a bigger crescent wrench and then I was able almost to bench press this, almost like I did a pulled on it to get it off and I just pressed it to get it tight and it just bottoms out and it's snug. So I feel good about that. Ahead and loosened up this clamp. We're gonna orient this clamp so that it's down on the front side so you can catch it with the screwdriver here. And we're just going to go ahead and get this boot actually back up into place. I guess first. Slide it up here. Get it around that little taper at the back. It snaps on. And then we're just going to put this 
thing on around here like that and they have it fairly form fitted so you don't have a bunch of the tail hanging down we'll just put that around there we'll go ahead and snug that up and I like how they give you all the parts to do this 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 isn't bad I mean like this is going better better than I thought it would honestly so nice little kit that he made some people complain about the cost of it, but with the cost of machining and CNC and all that stuff, now that stuff's cheap. I, I think he, I think he did great. You know, I'm, I'm happy with it. And I almost didn't do this project because I thought I got a Sasquatch package, stock lift, stock tires, 35 inch tires. I thought, man, maybe I don't need this, but um, I'm glad I did it. Okay, so here we are. We just got this um, snugged up with this oriented to where it's um, towards the back of the machine pointing down that way you can or still get at it and not have to work around this so that's a nice location just snug that up that's there won't be a lot hanging off the tail and that's the way that goes and of course we scooted this boot on first okay so now it's just a matter of putting this together put this in here and um, this can turn if you forget to like me to turn your steering back a little bit this can turn easily I'm not overly strong and I'm able to do that so um, you know if I can do it most people can do it easy so there we go that sits in there find the nuts you had on there from the beginning and we'll just go ahead and um, tighten that back down snug it up and then we'll put the wheel on and we'll tuck these um, torque these lug nuts down to uh, 120 foot pounds uh, and I'm going to go ahead and turn the wheel back to the center so that everything isn't all cockeyed. And, um, oh, then we got to put this clamp back. I know I was forgetting something. Um, and actually, I'm going to leave this here because I'm going to put the little Bronkbuster splints on next um, in my next video. But you're, if that's all you're going to do, you're going to locate that back down here, put that on, and away you go. But um, while we're in here, I don't know why, if you did that, why you wouldn't go ahead and take the time to put the little Bronkbuster little splints on to protect, protect this where it breaks at the tapered threads here. All right, so let's torque this back down. Um, if you're stopping there, put your wheel on, tighten your lug nuts to 120 foot-pounds. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and put on those little splints if this is all opened up anyway. So I used my impact. I wasn't sure how tight it was. I always like to feel things. So now I'm just kind of pulling that with this ratchet, getting it snugged up to work kind of. Oh, that's all it's got. When in doubt, you can always check torque specs, but I'm just taking that towards kind of bottoming out. That's a tapered fit, so it takes a while to snug it up, but there is a point where it just doesn't have any more. There it is. Okay, so here we have our uh, Bronk Buster tie rod support. Um, I believe this is going to go on like this because you have the thicker part here, thinner part here for the smaller one here. This is made to clear like a coil spring, even if you had some aftermarket ones, he's designed that um, to clear that. I know there's other options, but I like this because it's easy for me to put on. I don't have to do take it to the shop for a realignment because I'm not changing any of these settings. And, and I think it looks good. And sounds like it solves the problem. So um, first step is uh, using a um, kind of a hex, bit here this is a five millimeter so you just take these screws out keep in mind you got shorter ones for where it's thinner and longer screws for where it's thicker so um, pretty self-explanatory there so let's uh, go ahead and loosen these up and um, we'll take those out take it apart and then we'll we'll put it on okay really nice product that is indeed the way it goes this is kind of um, camfered out there to um, so you can get it around your bolt and then it's just gonna fit on there like this You can see this has a notch here a little key here And this has a key here for the square part where it's squared off on each side. So this is just gonna go like like so and We're gonna tighten these down to 17 foot-pounds um, I'm just gonna go hand snug and see how I feel about that And then the last step will be bringing this back down and attaching it so, you know, you're doing it right if you have it on and it um, you can read the Bronk Buster. So this is the driver's side, the left side of the vehicle, the driver's side. And I like it. I think it looks good too.
there. So I'm putting my screws in here just with it loose because when I turn this this way, it'll be harder to snug up. If I were thinking, I would have um, left this unhooked here since I had it apart anyway, but anyway, no big deal. This will work fine. There's room. I'm gonna put all the screws in. Remember, you got your shorter screws here, your longer ones here. So let's just go ahead and, and put those in. Um, I'll snug those up as much as I can and then still be able to rotate that. So let's go ahead and just get these, get these seated in a little more. This is something I was struggling with a little bit um, is there's about three eighths of an inch here. You don't butt this up over this little mark here on top, just to back up, show you orientation there. So you're gonna be in about three eighths of an inch roughly and it just kind of nestles in there. And you can see how this lines up. There's a hampered mark in there that lines up. Um, and then also a little, so you're gonna be just inside of that. Um, and then it just kind of nestles in there. Then I just actually did these all by hand. I just kind of use this and just by literally my fingers and went around and tightened that up. Now I can move the steering wheel back and forth to, you know, get the shock out of the way to be able to tighten all these by you know, 17 foot pounds. And I'm just going to get them snug by hand. I think that'll be, be fine. So um, let's go ahead and do that now. Just kind of getting them all snugged up equally, moving, moving around the backside there. And you can turn the wheel in and out. You can have a helper if you need to to be able to get shock clearance. And it's fine if you put this on. I put this bolt on and then I couldn't turn this, but it's fine. You don't have to take that off. You can just turn the steering wheel back and forth to access. Because right now I have this to where I can clear the shock and get these, but... I can get all these other ones, but this one's a little tight because when I get in there, it's hitting the shock. So if I turn that to the passenger side, then this will move over here and I can gain, gain access. So um, just tighten that up now and then I'll move this boot piece back. Um, I had this off from putting the bronc bushing, but if you hadn't, then you would just um, push this out of the way and then you know release this clamp here, push this out of the way. And over here, you've also, you're um, capturing that other mark. There's a mark that I think this was kind of indexed into. So you're capturing that mark in here slightly. So that's how you know you got the right position is you have this, this in just slight, the Bronkbuster brace just in slight, light, slightly from there. And then um, you'll be capturing barely the little ridge that was in that tie rod, a little index mark. And just snug those up and then we'll move to the other um, passenger side. This is, seems to be a pretty good setup for me tightening this down. It's just a quarter inch um, smaller ratchet with that um, Allen wrench on there. And I'm just able to move around on this back side and just keep tightening one, the other, the other, and then moved over here. And I just keep snugging them around and just keep rotating around to get um, all those really tight. And it's normal for this not to squeeze completely together. That's intentional, um, but it will be clamped on there nice and tight. So there's the final orientation. Um, and I'm just going around and snugging these up. Even in the Bronquester video, he says, you know, that most of the time he doesn't torque them. I'm just gonna get them nice and snug because a torque wrench will be hard to get back there anyway. So just a little footnote, but get them nice and snug. Keep moving around until they're bottoming out and really not moving any further. A quick tip is to access these. You can turn the, the steering wheel one way or the other. And then I found myself just rotating this back and forth to access the back of that because I could get to the top ones when I rotated that back, get some of these, and then I'd rotate it down when I get to some of the lower ones. So just a little, a little tip there. All right, let's put the wheel on and do the other side. Okay, the right side is next. Um, the driver's side was pretty easy, easier than I thought. The other side, I'm sure, will go even faster. So here we are. We have this oriented to where it's going to go on like this. And um, remember to keep the orientation the same. We're not gonna, we're, we're not removing the tire on the side because we don't need to. First step is just to take this clamp, loosen up so we can push this up and back a little bit out of our way. So here I am just taking this clamp, just gonna get, loosen that up, pull it off, and then move it, move it back out of the way here. So I just got this clamp, grabbed it, loosened it up, pulled it off and I'm just going to slide it down here for a moment and that will enable us to push this back out of the way so now we can put on 
the brace on the other side. So let's take the screws out of our, our bracket here, out of our Bronkbuster brace, keeping track of the short ones and the long ones, and loosely fit it up there. So just on the other, like on the other side, we test fit this up, and you can see you got a place, a relief cut out for this bolt here. And then this, the thin side is going to go towards the kind of the, the, sh the inner side where the shock is. And we're just going to kind of loosely put this on where, keeping in mind, there's this taper here. Remember, we were in about three-eighths of an inch on the inside of this taper. So the inner part of that's going to be there. And then we're going to cover this, this little ring right here. Remember, we kind of just kind of get over that, kind of end up right in there with the end of it. So let's go ahead and fit it up and put some of the screws in loosely, just finger tight. This is about how this is gonna end up. Just wanted to kind of show a bike lab view or a half view of it with it on. So we've got this top part where it's kind of um, in about three eighths of an inch on this dimple over here. I felt like when I was watching the install, this is what I had a hard time catching. And then here's that kind of that index place where this was, but now we're just sliding this back a little bit. And then I'll slide this, loosen this clamp, and before the install's done, I'll put this right up against that. So that's generally what it's going to look like uh, before we put the other halves on. And you can see there's a ridge here, and there's a ridge for that on the bronc buster, and we should have the writing forward. And then the, the other part is you can see how this has this little indexed notch right, right here. I know it's hard to see, but there's an index notch right here, and that's going to index in with this light notch right here. So just keep that in mind. So now this is lined up where it should go. This is indexed here. This is back just, just a little bit from that notch. And then maybe three-eighths of an inch at most, and then um, we'll go ahead and put the rest of the screws on the back side. So here's what it looks on the back side. So we're going to put the longer screws in here, obviously and the shorter screws in here. I put the first two in just finger tight to just help hold it on and I'll put the other ones in. Just finger tight for now, to get that in a good orientation. This is such nice machined um, aluminum. I just put these in by finger tight and then I just use this by hand and I can get these in most of the way, just taking a little bit, Allen bit, and then just, um, I mean, you just turn them in like this and then go to the next one and I'll just, this is how I did the other one too. It's really easy. So remember, if it's not going in, maybe you're cross-threaded. So I just went around and I do most of these just with this little bit. And then I snug them up with a one quarter inch drive. Now I'm just moving around with this from the front and the back, tightening these down. You can move your steering in and out, turn left and right to clear this, this if you need to. You can also um, rotate this by rotating it forward and backwards by twisting it there. So a few options if you have any trouble getting at the, those screws. Okay, I've tightened those up on the back side. Now I'm just gonna take my clamp and um, I rotated this up out of the way to put that on. See, this just rotates. You can move that around. Not This isn't spinning on here, it's moving at this joint over here. See that? A, okay, so now I'm gonna take this and just put this clamp back so it's up tight against the Brock Buster brace. Loosen this clamp, slide this in, release the clamp, and it's done. What takes the most time is just snugging all these up. It kind of reminds me of tightening up a triple clamp on a motorcycle. For those of you who have done that, you're just going to go back and forth and over here and over there. And it just takes a little bit of time, but it's easy. And do the same thing. You just keep snugging them down, finger tight first, and then snug them up with a, with a wrench. And he said it's normal to have a little bit of a split in here. Um, so that's that's the way they're supposed to be um, but a good product i think it's a lot easier than having to do an alignment um, peace of mind i wasn't going to do this but because i have stock stock factory um, 35s with a factory lift so i wasn't going to put these on but i got to thinking about it and for peace of mind it's worth doing um, but the brock buster tie rod ends i like them i think they look good you have peace of mind and easy to put on. They're quality product. I'm happy with what I got for the money. And also the Bronc bushings in there now too. That was went better than I thought it would. I just didn't have it tapped in at first as far as it should go. But yeah, I highly recommend both these parts. Stay tuned. I'm going to put these um, shock, rear shock protectors on. You can see these are going to fit up 
um, up on up on here to just protect that from from damage. So it's nice you can even get them color matched. So there you have it. Thanks for tuning in. Um, stay tuned for more Bronco and car content. Just some final thoughts on the Bronkbuster um, tie rod reinforcements and the Bronkbuster bushing and the steering rack. Um, very high quality pieces. The UHMW piece that goes in the steering rack is really high quality. I can tell that he put a lot of time, the designer put a lot of time into it. Quality parts. Um, I like how this looks. And I thought about not doing any of this, but I, um, in retrospect, I'm glad I did. I won't have to worry about it. And then if you do these, I do think it makes sense to do the bushing in there too, since it's so easy. Um, I think it took me to do all everything, maybe an hour and a half. If I did it again, uh, I could do it quite a bit quicker. And there was, wasn't anything difficult. I think I probably could have done it an hour if I had hurried on everything. Um, but uh, I didn't I didn't hurry. I just kind of took my time, but there it is. It's all done Now I don't have to worry about it and it, it looks good You kind of see the reinforcements tucked in there um, I like it so well done on the parts and Now we don't have to worry about it. I was I, even though I'm not gonna do any hard wheeling with this thing I just kind of thought well, maybe I'm at the I Don't know driving and my tire hops a little bit and something breaks and I, I don't I don't need that. And it's much easier to do this in a controlled environment, in your shop, um, with the right tools, rather than be out on a trail somewhere, um, trying, to, trying to put something together. And, and that's been my philosophy with the razors and different things that I've owned. And it's so much, so much more fun to be able to drive them than it is to work on them when you're off somewhere where you really don't want to be working on something. So there you have it. More Bronco content to come. We'll do some oil changes on this. We'll do uh, the little skids on the back and the rear, under the rear shocks from Bron Bronc Buster. So we'll be doing that and more, more Bronco related content to come. All right. Thanks for watching. If you like what we did, like, and subscribe and uh, have an awesome day. And again, I'm a rookie with this stuff. If I can do it, um, anybody can do it if they, if they take their time. Great product. I highly recommend. Well built.